Hi, it's Russ from Studio One Expert. And in a previous video, you may have seen it already, I showed you how to get a track to follow a live part. And it was this acoustic guitar in this session. Uh, that was where you had an acoustic guitar with some feel. It was either live or something you'd put down when you were just busking in your studio and trying to song idea out. And we got all of the other elements to follow it uh, using mapping to tempo. Now in this video, we're gonna flip the coin and we are actually going to get the guitar that's had no click track to be played. It wasn't played with a click track. I'm going to get to follow the get it back into time so it's tight with the rest of the track. Now it's pretty straightforward. It uses some of the tricks we used in the alternative video. So go and watch that if you haven't seen that. Uh, we're going to tab to transient and then we're just going to move some audio around. It's pretty straightforward to do this. So at the moment, if I play you this, you'll hear that it sounds like the drummer is drunk. <laughs> The drummer isn't drunk, the drummer's smack on in time. It's the acoustic guitar that was played without the click track. So right now it's it's out. We've guessed the time at about one, three, five. That's what we'd like. And what we're going to do is we're going to stretch this audio to make it fit with the rest of the track and get it in time. It's pretty straightforward. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you've got your inspector open here, this I, and come here and make sure you're in elastic sound, pro polyphonic there. And then we are going to go in and we're going to move this audio around. Let me show you what we're going to do. So first we, we zoom into the audio a bit and we're going to tab to transient to go through the track. So we're just going to solo this for now. Just listen to the acoustic guitar on its own. So go to the beginning. There's the, there's the next bar I want. So I get there and then I cut the audio. And there's the next one. There's the next one. And there's the next one. So there's four done. We can carry on going through. And there's the last one. And as you can see, there's bar 17 there. That's where this one should be ending. So as time has gone by, you can see that it's all moved a bit. So the next thing we do is we come out a little bit so we can see all the audio. And as you can see, the further down the song gets, the more the drift happens. So what I want to do now is I want to make sure that I'm in snap here. And I'm going to snap. We can snap to bar or snap to fence. We can I'm going to use the adaptive one. So it snaps to the grid. And we're going to go here and pull this one to there. And this one to there, that's bar 15. This should start there at bar 13. This should start there at bar 11. This should start at bar nine. This one at bar seven. This one should go to bar five. And this one should start at bar three. So you can see now, those gaps are clearly showing to us there's some timing differential. Not bad though, considering it didn't have a click track. So I'm gonna zoom right in. And I think here we're okay. Now here's the trick. Normally when you pull the audio, like I grab this audio with this tool and I pull it and it will just pull the audio out. Uh, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is, I'm gonna just undo that, is if I hold the mouse over it and see that thing and then press the Alt key, you'll see a little uh, sort of timer or a clock face appear. Now if you, that's gonna stretch that audio to there. So we just do that on all these pieces and we just grab them and we move them. Press the Alt key. Just pull that. As you can see, some are in and some are out. So that one seems to be okay. This one here and this one here. Go a bit further up and this one here. Alt key every time. Now let's have a listen to that now with the percussion and drums in. So there we are. Now I've done it every two bars, as you can see, three, five, seven. You could do it as often as you like to get that into time. And I find that more useful than going through and using the bend markers and quantizing. I'm from a Pro Tools tradition and we have things like Beat Detective and Elastic Audio, but I always think it's better to work in small segments. You get better results by doing that kind of time stretching. The final thing you want to do is you want to mark all the audio up that you've got here, all these sections, 
and then you want to create crossfades on all of them and that's I've just pressed the X key to do that and now the small crossfades within all of those if you come in close you'll see them because what you don't want is just tight cuts there you want those little crossfades you can hardly see them but they're enough to make sure there's no clicks and pops So there we are, that's a very quick tutorial showing you how to use the Alt key and the pointer and the drag to get things time stretched and all into time. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon.